Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Here to talk about Floyd Mayweather against Miguel Cotto. But before I do, always remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, one of the problems with boxing is that... Um, it's very hard to see what's really happening. The things that we see up front aren't even sometimes the most important things in the fight. We um, can tell when a guy is a big puncher, especially when he throws hard looping punches. You can look at that and quickly see what the guy's doing. And we uh, will look at a guy like that and we'll say, oh man, this guy is dynamite but it's much harder to see the type of game that Floyd Mayweather brings right because Mayweather is actually underrated um, his defense literally is the kind of defense that makes fights like his upcoming fight against Miguel Cotto an easy one for him Right? And it's very hard when you see a guy in the ring and he's doing great defensive maneuvers. It's very hard to get as excited by the great defensive maneuvers and the thinking as it is when we see hand speed, a lot of flash, and a lot of power. Now, we've seen this fight before. And let me just say, um, before I continue, so no one's confused, I think Mayweather wins this fight quite easily. In fact, I personally will be surprised if Mayweather doesn't get the stoppage, right? The way I would structure the bet is I would take Mayweather to win. That would be my base bet. And I would straddle it against Mayweather by KO, right? Let's talk about why. This fight's already happened. Miguel Cotto, for those who don't know, is a southpaw fighting out of an orthodox stance. Right? Very different than a southpaw fighting out of a southpaw stance like Zab Judah did against Floyd. Now, I'll agree, Floyd was baffled by Zab Judah, at least for the first three rounds of that fight. Floyd even got knocked down in that fight. I know that most of the media is going to point out that Floyd has had some challenging moments with southpaws, and they'll point to that Zab Judah fight. Right. We'll also hear that Floyd has a problem with aggressive fighters who can come inside and they'll point to the Castillo fights. Many people believe that Floyd lost the first Castillo fight. Now let's talk about Miguel Cotto. He's a southpaw, only his left hand is not far back. Rather, his left hand is his lead hand. He's literally facing off against Floyd, just like Floyd is facing off against him. And he's going to have that lead hand out front. His dominant hand's going to be out front, just like Oscar De La Hoya's dominant hand was out front. Right? And what Cotto might try to do is what he did to Carlos Quintana. He might try to get inside and throw that left hand to the body. Right. If you look at the Quintana KO, it's one of the better KOs on Cotto's dossier. Cotto, when he's at his best, is a devastating inside body puncher. Right. Don't look at Cotto's last fight against Margarito and think that's prime Miguel Cotto. Go back a few fights and look at Cotto against Carlos Quintana. Right. Now, Cotto, when you see him, He'll leap out at fans because that left hand is explosive, right? And he throws it with authority and conviction. He has power. Guys go down. Look at the Ricardo Mayorga fight when he finally catches up with Mayorga late in that fight, right? Here's the problem. Floyd Mayweather is the smartest man in boxing, and I'm not kidding when I say that. And I'm including all of the trainers, Manuel Stewart, Freddie Roach, uh, Roger Mayweather, Floyd Mayweather Sr. 
Uh, Floyd Mayweather is the smartest man in boxing. He makes adjustments. He already knows how to defuse your game by the fourth round. And if you look at the De La Hoya film, De La Hoya was just like Cotto, explosive left hook. In fact, it was probably harder to block because De La Hoya threw it at a 45 degree angle. Right? So you didn't know if it was going to the body or the head. Right? And like Miguel Cotto, and I know this is controversial, De La Hoya had a very underdeveloped right hand. Right? By the way, you can throw Manny Pacquiao into that underdeveloped right hand group. So when you look at the film, and it's the secret to this Cotto Mayweather fight. When you look at the film, particularly the early rounds, of Oscar De La Hoya against Floyd Mayweather in a fight that, quite frankly, I consider a masterpiece, I don't know how it was a split decision. You're going to see that early on, Mayweather tries to come inside on Floyd Mayweather and tries to take out Floyd Mayweather's body with left hooks. And that's Cotto's best shot, right? And what you're going to see is something that doesn't look great to fans. But from a boxing perspective, it is top of the building. It's penthouse type stuff. The way Floyd stands, and keep in mind, he's a righty, right? He has his right hand back against Oscar De La Hoya. And what you're going to see is his entire body is defensed by him just draping his right hand along his body. In other words, what De La Hoya discovers is that Floyd's body is not open for left hooks. You have to see it to believe it, right? When De La Hoya is throwing punches, he's hitting Floyd's arm. He cannot get around Floyd's elbow. And when he tries to come up top, by the way, the genius of Floyd is Floyd has the hand draped in such a way where even if De La Hoya tried to change the punch midstream to hit him up top, Floyd has his glove up around his face. It looks subtle. It's a plus boxing, right? He completely takes away Oscar De La Hoya's left hand. That simple move, which seriously, 98% of boxers can't do and don't have the faith in their defense to do against most guys. When a big hitter comes in throwing hooks, most guys back away. Floyd actually stands there. And Floyd puts up his hand and literally diffuses the left hand. Let's go further. Because Floyd has no respect whatsoever for Oscar De La Hoya's right hand, just like I believe he'll have no respect for Miguel Cotto's right hand. Floyd doesn't even shoot a jab to create distance between the two of them. All Floyd does when Oscar throws the right hand is just use head movement. This is while he's dodging the left. He just uses head movement to move his head out of the way. Let me just say too that Oscar came this close to getting knocked out in the fight and I know Oscar De La Hoya supporters are gonna say you gotta be kidding me. He gets this close to being knocked out in the fight because when Oscar's coming in the entire time Floyd and I'm just telling you, Floyd's best skill is his thinking. Floyd is trying to catch him with a left hook. It's the same left hook that took out Ricky Hatton. Floyd is trying to catch him with the left hook as De La Hoya comes in. Because understand, because De La Hoya, like Cotto, is fighting in an orthodox stance, he has to get through Floyd's left shoulder to try to throw the left to the body. And as he comes in, he's vulnerable to that check 
left hook, right? I don't believe Miguel Cotto is great defensively. I don't believe Miguel Cotto plays the angle. So understand when you look at the Floyd Zab Judah film, that's a great film to look at if you want to see Mayweather tested early. Understand that Zab Judah is an advanced fighter who is using angles, right? I believe, like Oscar De La Hoya, Miguel Cotto is going to be right in front of Floyd Mayweather. And I believe Mayweather knows that Cotto's only chance is to land a great left hook, either up top or to the body, right? And I believe Floyd understands that he's already fought this style when he fought De La Hoya, and he can defend it. Let me also point out, too, that I know that, um, you know, much has been said about the Castillo fight. And people say, well, wow, didn't Castillo get inside? Didn't Castillo rough up Bayweather? Understand there was a rematch. Mayweather beat Castillo clearly in that rematch. Let me go one step further. Mayweather, since fighting Castillo, has fought guys who are excellent to the body. Carlos Baldemir, Ricky Hatton. And he's shown a different side of himself. Mayweather, who's adaptive, reactive. He literally will change things during fights. Mayweather has figured out how to handle Castillo's style. Ricky Hatton gave an interview right after he got knocked out by Floyd. And in that interview, Ricky Hatton actually made the point that when he got inside on Floyd Mayweather, Floyd knew what he was doing, right? All I'm saying is the Castillo fight was a long time ago. Mayweather is a much better fighter than he was when he fought Castillo the first time. Let me also make another point. You know, Miguel Cotto has lived a charmed life, right? Is he who we think he is? Now, Floyd used to spar with a guy named Demarcus Corley. I would encourage everyone to go back and look at the Cotto Corley film. You're going to see that Cotto is badly hurt by Demarcus Corley. Badly hurt by Demarcus Corley. Barely is able to hold on. Didn't have the skills to literally tie Corley up to buy time, right? I would argue that he still doesn't have those skills. At least I haven't seen them, even in the last fight against Margarito. He spends a lot of time backing away from Margarito, right? He's out of the pocket when Margarito comes forward. I think Cotto has a hard time staying in the pocket. Not only that, look at some of his major fights. The Shane Mosley fight could have gone either way. I know Shane Mosley to this day in interviews says that he thought he won that fight, right? And no knock on Mosley, but understand Mosley is a brawler masquerading as a boxer. He's not that great a boxer. He has hand speed. He has no head movement, right? And so the fact that Cotto went the distance with Sugar Shane really isn't the kind of thing that, quite frankly, um, leads me to believe that against a different level of boxer in Floyd Mayweather, Cotto will be able to go the distance. Let's talk about the Zab Judah fight. You know what? If you uh, listen to Zab Judah in his interviews, he points out that he thought he had that fight won. Then Cotto started hitting him low. If you look at the film, you're going to see that Cotto hit Zab Judah low at least five times in that fight, at least. Not only that, even supporters of Zab Judah know that the knock on Zab is he starts fast and then he runs out of gas, right? Um, you know, think about Zab Judah against uh, Lucas Mathis recently. 
Think about Zab Judah, in fact, against Floyd Mayweather, where he had that fight after three rounds, gave it away, then lost his cool later in that fight. The Cotto Joshua Clotty fight. I thought Cotto lost that fight. Right? Joshua Clotty got overly conservative the last two rounds of that fight. I thought Clotty pulled a loss from a win. Right? Cotto, Manny Pacquiao. I thought that fight looked like a mismatch. In other words, you know, Manny Pacquiao cracked the code, knocked Cotto down multiple times going into the 12th round. There was very little suspense in that fight. Cotto versus Yuri Foreman. Now we know Yuri Foreman's knee exploded during that fight. I understand the public sees the fight differently than I do. But I agree with Newsday columnist Wally Matthews. And Matthews is a pretty shrewd guy on boxing. He's a guy I follow. You know, Matthews thought that fight was even after six, as did I. You know, unfortunately, there isn't much you can do when your knee completely falls apart like Yuri Foreman's knee fell apart, right? Now, Cotto versus Antonio Margarito. Here again, I've made a video on this, a post-fight video. I disagree with most of the public. I thought Margarito was catching up fast. I thought the last couple of rounds of that fight were going to be high drama, high action, right? As I said earlier in this video, I questioned Miguel Cotto's survival skills, right? I thought Margarito was still relatively fresh. You know, the fight was where Margarito wanted it to be. He had a tired guy in front of him backing up, right? Of course, the doctor really changed the tempo of that fight because after several rounds, the doctor's in there talking to the corner, delaying things, right? Changing the tempo, preventing Margarito from fully getting the benefit of Robert Garcia and the guys in his corner. And even then, I thought the last two rounds of that fight were going to be high octane. Of course, they called that fight because of Margarito's eye. And, um, you know, all I can say is the eye is so bad that apparently Margarito is next in line to fight Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. If, and I do say if, Chavez Jr. gets by Marco Antonio Rubio, right? You know, <laughs> all, I, all I could say is, I didn't like the stoppage in the Cotto Margarito rematch. So when I look at Miguel Cotto's record, I'm seeing low blows against Zab Judah, a narrow escape and a questionable stoppage earlier in his career against Demarcus Corley, him getting off the canvas in some fights, right? I know he fought for the title at 140, had to get up off the canvas, right? All I'm saying is a fighter like this, in my opinion, might get stopped outright by Floyd Mayweather. And those of you who think Mayweather has no punching power, you're kidding yourself. Understand he stopped Ricky Hatton, right? Take a look at the Arturo Gotti film. The one thing we knew about Gotti was that Gotti was a warrior who was going to always bring it during the fight. He stopped Arturo Gotti. Right When Floyd Mayweather has an advantage on a guy, that guy's in trouble. He knocked down Juan Manuel Marquez, Right was dominating that fight. Marquez was this close to getting stopped in that fight. So I think Floyd, skill-wise, has the upper hand. He'll be able to block Miguel Cotto's left hook. I don't care who Cotto's trainer is. It could be the former Cuban national team trainer. Right, Maybe Emmanuel Stewart comes back. The problem is... When you're Cotto's age, you're not going to develop a right hand. It's just too hard. It has to do with balance and timing. You're not going to figure that out when you're late 20s, early 30s. So he's going to come in with a left hook that's going to be out in front. Floyd, who studies opponents, is going to know it. Cotto's going to throw that left hook to Floyd's body. It'll be blocked. He'll come up top. It'll be blocked. Floyd is going to be head hunting him the entire time throwing that left hook. You'll know Floyd completely believes that he has Cotto owned if he starts throwing straight right hands and starts using that right hand for things other than defense. 
I like Floyd big in this one. The bet I'm recommending is Floyd to win the fight. Straddled against Floyd by KO. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here on YouTube. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. And for premium picks, visit us at dewirevip.com. Thanks for watching.